everyone who looks is like, wow, Iron Woman. We do not want to do business uh, in Ukraine, we want to help. We have to test 3 million times like that and 3 million times like that. We have all the technologies you can find on the internet. Hi, my name is Artem Kula and you are watching material on YouTube channel Kigme. Here we talk about startup and technology news from around the world. Today the topic of our report is about how Ukraine, which is successfully resisting Russian aggression, can become the leader of the high-tech prosthetics business in the world. Lada takes the bottle with a bionic hand and takes a sip of water. She is almost used to the fact that her hand understands what she is going to do and chooses the right grip, because her prosthesis has intuitive control. The grip number one is two fingers. When I squeeze them, I can take some small parts, all kinds of things, squeeze them, put them. This is three fingers for larger objects. This is for a bottle, for taking a bottle or a glass or a bag of juice. It's very cool grip. I I like it a lot, one of my favorites. The main method of controlling the bionic prosthesis is carried out with the help of two Mio Bio sensors located in the receiver. These sensors read how the muscles of the stop contract and perform the movement of the robotic prosthesis. Two small activation of, of muscles uh, means that user want to change the grip and to uh, the grip will be changing in some direction. Mm -hmm. For example, long activation of muscle, it means that user wants to open the grip or to close the grip. And by this way, the user controls the prosthetic hand by activation and um, by uh, different activations of different, uh, different muscles. At the same time, the robot hand can be controlled by using an application, where user can set any settings from the prosthesis control schemes to adjusting the grips, their order, etc. It takes about 2-3 weeks to learn to control such a hand, and Esper Bionics products are currently being tested by 9 volunteers, both in Ukraine and in the United States. The main reason why, why users want to use the prosthetic hand, first of all, it's socialization problem. It's not about functionality, it's about socialization. So they want to be confident. They don't want to catch this um, with a uh, look from strangers when you are uh, walking through street or in metro or something like that but uh, they can do it with this plastic robotic hands and when they for example they are in a bus and they want to grab some object i don't know to hold himself uh, and they want to make it easily they want to, to make it very natural and that's why the control is very, very important for them. When I walked with a cosmetic hand, it was morally stressful because everyone looked, discussed something, asked. And now I just walk with my head held high, with my hand raised up, because everyone who looks is like, wow, Iron Woman. It's great to notice those looks and not ask for help at some point, but just do everything yourself. Esper Bionics is an American startup with Ukrainian roots. The team started in Kyiv with three co-founders – Anna Belivantseva, Dmitro Hazda and Igor Ilchenko. And now, being in New York, the startup has expanded to 23 specialists from both Ukraine and the USA. This year the robot hand became famous around the world when the team won an award from one of the biggest design competitions Red Dot. The main players in our market, they, they are focusing uh, on hardware features, mainly to make, for example, this hand waterproof or very strong uh, or something about external look. We are focusing on software. Of course, our hand uh, 
very um, great design because uh, we were focused on, on anatomical design, anatomical look. Uh, so the prosthetic hand is very similar to our natural limb. Today the startup cooperates with the four prosthetic clinics in the USA and is in a constant contact with the several clinics in Ukraine. As soon as their prosthesis is presented on the market, the team plans to supply its products to Ukraine as well. We really want to help uh, Ukrainians with our product and we can do it because unfortunately it's a great demand for our product right, right now in Ukraine. We do not want to do business uh, in Ukraine. We want to help. That's why uh, the price for our hand is about uh, six, um, seven, I think, seven thousand uh, dollars uh, per hand. Mm -hmm. And if uh, without any marriage, it's like a manufacture cost of our hand. And I think uh, comparing with the price for similar devices uh, abroad, uh, it's uh, about uh, twice or third time lower than mm -hmm. the price for different devices. Two powerful bionic hand manufacturing companies such as SP Bionics are currently operating in Ukraine. At the same time, the government implemented programs to install bionic prosthesis, which is the Ukrainian military has been using since 2015. The state says we provide you for the first year you will have a mechanical and a cosmetic hand. After a year you submit an application to the Commission on the Feasibility for installing a MyoBio arm, because it costs millions there, the components themselves. A year after operation they provide you with a bio. Why is that? Well, because it's going on with the stabilization of the anthropometric data of the stump. The post-surgical swellings disappear years in a year it will stabilize and it makes sense to install sensors there. However, Esper Bionics robot hand is only the first step on the path of this progressive team. The startup plans to start developing a bionic leg already next year. The improvement of the technology of lower limb prosthesis does not lag behind the development of robotic hands. Ahender Parashar, a native of India who has lived in Ukraine for more than 30 years, conducts a tour of the factory where parts for modern prosthesis are made. You are now at uh, Parashar Industries and we are manufacturer of prosthetic components like knee joints, adapters and prosthetic feet. So this is our factory, this is the first floor and as you can see uh, this uh, US made CNC 5X machine. And this is what the finished product looks like. Nahender's personal pride. This is the joint we make completely in our factory. It has been designed here by me. I'm the chief designer. His story began in 2008, when one partner suggested to Nagender that he should start delivering parts of prosthetics from Hong Kong. Later, he thought about setting up his own production. And I said, OK, I'll make them in Ukraine. And the quality then will depend on me. I uh, took a machine or two on rent and uh, uh, hired a person who knew how to work on these machines and then we started uh, making some some simple uh, simple adapters in 14 years nahender went from one machine to an entire factory today he has at his disposal the best machines for the production and testing of details prosthetic device testing equipments are very expensive we have to test a foot when you talk about lower limb uh, that's a foot and that's a heel, that's, uh, that's a toe, so uh, we have to test three million times like that and three million times like that. If you put the fo cycling force once in a second, it's about 35 days non-stop. If you work only uh, at the working hours, then it can go to months. During all this time, Nahender learned to make knee joints of an international level, which are already widely used in Ukraine. However, in the conditions of purely Ukrainian market, it is difficult for such an enterprise to stay afloat. We cannot survive on only Ukraine, uh, but we have to start in Ukraine. That's why we did it. Now, this knee, joints, uh, this knee, this knee joint uh, is made by only the similar 
only by two companies in the world, uh, Japanese and German, and we are the third. Right now we are not exporting anything uh, because these products are very new and uh, in the beginning we will uh, intu introduce them to Ukraine. They are already being used by people who are very happy. These two stories, Nahender's factory and Esperbionics robot hands, clearly demonstrate that Ukraine has the necessary talents to create a prosthetics business of the highest level. For a long time, people with amputations, in order to receive the appropriate quality of service, choose for themselves the option of going abroad, either to Germany or to the United States. However, since 2014, from the moment of Russia's first aggression against independent Ukraine, it was high demand for soldiers who lost their arms on the war. So the quality of Ukrainian prosthesis has increased so much that in some ways it even surpasses foreign prosthesis. In 2015, we have installed prosthesis on the boys and they went to Austria and the Austrians could not believe that it was made in Ukraine. The level of manufacturing, production and quality in Ukraine is constantly increasing. Our potential is very large. Companies start with technologies and the specialists improve their qualifications. We have all the technologies you can find on the internet. We have everything integrated and everything is done the same way. Obviously, due to Russia's war against Ukraine, the demand for such products is simply insane. However, the biggest problem is that this industry in Ukraine is not yet sufficiently financed. Since 2017, the Ministry of Social Policy has not recalculated the cost on products. There is inflation, changes in rent and salary. We are trying to kill two birds with one stone to survive and to provide the victims with prosthetic and orthopedic products. At the same time, the state allowed to the market of prosthetics to float freely, allowing both public and private companies to provide prosthesis, which significantly improves the situation. The state said, OK, there can be private enterprises and there can also be state companies. Here you have the same condition of existence and enterprises have a feature that everyone have to develop. Integrating technologies into life, the state has taken this step. In order for Ukraine to become a world leader in prosthetics business, it is necessary to attract investments and look for foreign partners. The state should launch new effective programs that would be beneficial both to manufacture of prosthesis and to prosthetics market. With the products that we have now, we will be, uh, we are already a leader in the world market. Yes, the world doesn't know about that, but uh, it's not something that needs to be tested. It's a working product. They are going to, to be out very soon. Uh -huh. And yes. the world will know that Ukraine uh -huh. can do very good things. If you enjoyed this report, give it a like, subscribe to our channel and write in the comments how do you feel about the latest developments in prosthetics and which country you consider to be the leader. See you soon on the Kigme channel.